Hi guys, Shibran here with a brand new video on ISO. If you haven't watched my video on aperture and shutter speed, please do that before you get to this part. It's just going to make a lot more sense if you've watched the previous videos. Alright, so what is um, an ISO? ISO refers to how sensitive your image sensor is to light. Okay, There's a relationship here. Uh, the higher the ISO, the more sensitive your image sensor is going to be to light. And the lower the ISO, the less sensitive it's going to be to light. Okay. When do you use high ISO and low ISO? All right. Low ISO is very simple. During daylight, when there's plenty of light, daytime, um, you just pick the low ISO. Why? Because um, you there's plenty of light. You don't need any artificial light. The light is already there, so you pick the lowest ISO. Okay, your sensor is less sensitive. Okay. Now, during let's say low light situations, uh, concerts, uh, sporting events, uh, indoors where there's, not, where there's not a lot of light, you use higher ISO. Why? Because you want your image sensor to be more sensitive to light. Whatever light that's available to you, what it does is that it's going gonna, it's gonna to try to gather all that light, okay, and sort of magnifies it. And it's, it creates artificial light, okay? So, remember, the higher the ISO, the more sensitive um, your image sensor is going to be, and it's sort of going to create this artificial light. So let's t look at some examples. Um, let's say you are at a at a concert, okay, Andrea Bocelli concert or whatever you listen to, and your flash. Obviously, you can't use your flash even if it's allowed because the flash is not going to make it all the way to the stage. What do you do? There's not a lot of light. You increase your ISO, and that will basically create this artificial light, and you can take your picture. It's not going to be underexposed. Now, there's a trade-off when you use a higher ISO. With high ISO, it creates your image will have um, a noise, like it will have like graininess, and that's the basically drawback of using high as high ISO. Now, depending on what camera you're using, some of, some of the, the the newer cameras, uh, full-frame cameras like D700 or D3S, I mean the image quality on higher ISO is just phenomenal. So it all depends on what camera you're using. The ISO performance on D3100 is going to be different than D7000, and it's going to be different from D7000 to D700 or D3S, let's say. So it all depends on what camera you're using. Um, another example would be you're at a birthday party, and they turn off the light to blow up the candle you have to use high ISO. So don't think that, oh, I only shoot outdoors, so I'm not going to need it. Sometimes, unless you really don't take pictures indoors or in low light situations at all, then I guess you could get away with it. But, you know, for the most part, um, you will be taking pictures indoors and you definitely need to learn, um, especially if you're going to use manual mode, which I highly recommend because you could really get um, the exposure that you're looking for instead of the camera picking random settings for you. All right, let's take a look at the camera and see where we need to go to change the ISO. All right, guys, let's take a look at where this ISO information is displayed. Right here, it says ISO, it's on 1250 right now. All your other information, your f-stop, your shutter speed. All right. So where do you go to change this? On this particular model, you'll see it says ISO right here. Okay, you press this button, and now you just have only ISO information displayed. The back dial, move this, and you can change your ISO. Okay, 6400, and that's your different other high settings. Okay. You could bring it back to 100. All right. On this particular monitor, I could just do it from here. Um, some cameras, you may have to go into your menu. 
So let's do that real quick. Menu. And right here it says ISO sensitivity setting. Press that and here you can just go and do this in manual. 125th. Now depending on the camera, um, my camera lets me do allows me to do one third. Okay, so if you're um, allows you to do one half, then it's going to be 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, 3200. Okay. So here you could go into the menu and do this. Now another option you may have is your auto ISO, meaning that you could put the ISO on auto. If you're not too sure which one to use, you can come here and pick on. Now the ISO is on auto. The camera will basically pick what ISO to choose. Not a huge fan of this. Um, I did use this in the beginning when I was learning photography and 9 out of 10 times the camera was not picking um, the, right, the right setting. So, you know, go ahead and try this if it's your first time doing it. See how comfortable you feel but eventually you're gonna get used to it it's not that it's not that complicated you can also tell the camera depending on if your camera allows you to the maximum sensitivity you can, you wanna go up to when you have it on auto let's say so you can tell the camera look 64 is the highest I wanna go well if you know that at 64 the pictures are really bad there's a lot of noise there's a lot of grain then you know maybe 3200 maybe 1600 all depends on on the performance of your camera's um, sensor so this is you this is where you go and you can actually tell the minimum shutter speed as well okay 125th or whatever you wanna whatever you're you're comfortable with alright now let's take a look at some sample pictures Real quick guys, I forgot to mention this one thing, um, is that when you increase your shutter speed, you also have to increase your ISO. The reason why we do that is because when you increase your shutter speed, there's less ambient light coming in. And to compensate for that, you have to increase your ISO so your pictures are not overexposed. So keep in mind that when you're changing your shutter speed, if you're going from 80th of a second to 125th of a second or 250th of a second, um, you know, make sure that you adjust your ISO, take a couple of pictures and compare it to see you know, what gives you the better exposure. All right, now let's take a look at our first picture. Uh, this picture was taken indoors, um, one sixtieth of a second, and I picked ISO 100. And you can see that the picture is dark. It's underexposed. Uh, why is it underexposed? Because I picked ISO of 100. Um, it would have been okay if I had taken this outdoors, daylight, 100 ISO. It would have been fine. There would have been plenty of light. But in this case, there's not a lot of light, so it's dark. So next picture, I increase the ISO. Um, same shutter speed, 60th of a second, ISO 320, and right away you can see the difference that by increasing the ISO, there's more light. Um, there's a little bit of more green in it too, but at 320, it's it's nothing nothing major. But what happens if you want to increase your shutter speed? Okay, I we just talked about that. When you increase your shutter speed, you have to increase your ISO. So in this picture, um, I increased the shutter speed to 250th of a second. And at the same time, I increased the ISO to 1000. Okay? And this is how the picture looks like. You could see there's more noise in the picture, the blurry area. You could see there's a little bit of more grain than it did before. Okay? Now, next picture, it's even brighter. Why is that? Because I increased the ISO to 1600. Same, uh, all the other um, exposure time is the same, you know, 2 50th of a second, but just by increasing the ISO, the picture is more brighter. Now, what happens that, what happens if you want to take a picture of a group and you don't want to use f2.8 or f3.2, you want, you want a bigger 
um, area in focus. We talked about that in our aperture video. You pick uh, a, a f5.6 or f8, f11, depending on what you're shooting. Um, you want your aperture to shrink a little. So when you shrink your aperture, uh, the the drawback of that is that there's less light coming in. So in this picture, I picked f 5.6 and to compensate for the light I bumped up the ISO to 2500 and now you can see there's more noise in there I mean the picture is okay but there's more noise in there and in the next picture I picked let me see f5.6 and I bumped the ISO to 3200 so you could see that it's not it's a little brighter than the previous picture but there's more noise um, in there now here's a close-up picture of the flower you could see the blurry part you see a lot of dot dots those that's the grain that's it's called in digital it's called basically noise so that's the that's the drawback of that so you pretty much have to play with this with your ISO um, if you don't feel comfortable you could leave it on auto uh, but you know in in few weeks you should be able to pick up on that if you're if you're taking pictures on regular basis